So this tutorial would be about how to make a gear in SketchUp that you could viably 3D print and then it would just mesh with other gears well enough you won't have a problem. So let's start off using our template. If you want to choose millimeters you can choose whatever you want but I'm just going to choose millimeters because it's easier to work in. The template doesn't really matter, they have different ones, 3D printing, interior design, it's all fine. So you select the template and then it, it shows up with this. Alright, so once you have SketchUp open, you want to select the circle tool and then just make a circle. If I want the shaft of the gear to match a 1 4th inch bolt, which I would be using as the axle of the gear, I would use about 3.5 millimeters as the radius because it will give us about the correct amount of distance. And after you have that, then you just want to select the line tool and then make a line to the edge of the gear. For this example, we're going to go about 40 millimeters or 4 centimeters. So we're going to zoom into the edge of the line and then now we're going to make the actual teeth of the gear. So what I found it best to do is make it 3 millimeter teeth as best for the 3D printing. So let's just go with 3 millimeters along the green axis so it's straight. And then 3 millimeters along the red axis. After you've done that Let's just move ourselves over here. So you want to make this into a low square. So it matches. And there's your square. And after that, you can delete the rest of this line right here. Okay, that's good now. So now you just have a circle and a square. And you do not want to have square teeth on your gears. So let's make it into more of a tooth shape so our gears can actually mesh together. So what I found it easiest to do was just kind of to pull, match up some of the points. I guess these weren't really necessary, but whatever at this point. So we can just delete all the all the extra lines and that will not leave you with the tooth shape. So as you can see we are just deleting all of these lines, every single one. And here is your tooth shape. This should be the best shape to mesh together with the gears. And real quick let's just delete this so we have lines of the actual tooth. Okay, so now we have the tooth shape. We can just select this. And what we're going to do actually is we're going to rotate the shape. So after we've made this, we can just select it. And then let's go closer to the center of the gear. So in order to actually make the gear, you have to use uh, this tool and basically just select it along the red axis and then you should be able to move the end of the gear but you don't want to do that so press the alt or option key so you can move it around like this so obviously it's a circle so the angle you want is 360 degrees and then press enter and then here's where you have to actually find out how many teeth that you want. I'm sure there are mathematical ways to do this, but what I've found out is just to use trial and error to make the gears essentially mesh well enough and then it usually works. So let's just do that right now. And in order to select the amount of teeth, you can do divided by, let's say we want 30 teeth. And uh, 
yeah, this kind of looks like his ear, but let's just see the distance. Okay, so we have approximately about five millimeters between in this space right here, which is way too big. We want something a bit smaller so we could actually fit the teeth and they won't wobble around. So let's back up from that. Let's back up from that and do it again. So select it again and then do the whole thing with the protractor. Red axis, swivel it around, V60, and this time let's try to divide it by 40. So we will have 40 teeth on the gear. This actually looks a little bit better now. So in between these you have three millimeters, which is which three millimeters in between these two points is exactly the same between see here. So we have three millimeters here and three millimeters here about. You can't make this exact really because you obviously you can't have a fraction of a gear tooth and even if you did that that would just be the same as having a fraction of a space in between the gear points. So what you want to do now is just connect all the edges together. In order to do this you just connect the points, press escape. You obviously don't want to do this because then that creates a different shape and that will give you problems when you try to extrude it. So it's easier just to do this. So we've done most of the gear now, it's just a bunch of squiggly lines at this point. And all we have to do is connect the last two pieces. So once you do this, it should create a shape. Okay, so now it's filled it in. And first thing we want to do is get rid of this hole. So we're going to delete that. So now we just have what looks to be a gear. And obviously we can flip it around and it's infinitely thin. So let's make it a little bit thicker. And uh, you can obviously make this as thick or as thin as you want. This is excessive. This is a little low. And what I found is just to make it 10 millimeters or centimeter, that seems to work fine. It's a little chubby, I guess, but if you're gonna print it in plastic, PLA plastic, especially, and it's not the most hardest material that there is, you want to be able, you want to be able to have a little bit of extra material so it won't just chip off like it would because uh, some 3D printing plastics like PLA are brittle and you want to have a strong part. So this right here is how to make a gear. And if you want to make, for example, a smaller or bigger gear that would mesh to this gear, you would just make your line going from here to here a different size when you start. You still make the teeth shape the same and connect them, try to get the distance here as the same from here to here. But it doesn't really have to be exact, it just has to be good enough. And uh, for the teeth, the teeth don't really matter as long as the two different gears can mesh with each other. You can have the teeth however you want, bigger or smaller. Obviously bigger teeth will give you uh, stronger teeth. And if you're doing smaller teeth, you might have finer control or something like that. But it shouldn't really be much of a problem. And of course, if you want to export an STL, you export an STL and that will allow you to 3D print it. When you do that, of course, it will give you this options so you can export it in millimeters and this will allow you to th just 3D print the model directly from SketchUp. So before I decided to end this video, I thought it would be good to show the finished parts. These are the two gears which I made. This is the one that I've shown. It's four millimeter radius, so an eight millimeter gear. 
and this is half the size, so it is a two, two centimeter radius. And uh, these obviously are three millimeter teeth, three millimeter teeth on the same edge, and they are able to mesh with each other perfectly fine. They might grind a little bit. This is something you can refine. I'm not the best of it. I actually just figured out how to do this recently. These gears are printed in black PLA at 10% infill, so I was able to print them really fast, and they seem to be pretty strong. Maybe not for high strength type equations. Obviously, a gear made out, made out of metal at the same size would be much stronger, but you can just make these really, really cheap. You can essentially mass produce these for whatever project, maybe a robot or something. That's what these were for. Uh, and uh, so it's just a gear. This one spins, this one spins faster. You can learn how to make these, and it's pretty easy.